Hey, welcome back to DIY Willie. Today I've got to work on the Scion. Um, I replaced the struts a year or so back and uh, I thought that was the cause of some clunking that I would hear as it went over bumps. Um, it wasn't. Uh, there appears to be something else. I looked under there and I've seen that the bushings in the control arms, the lower control arms, it doesn't have bumper control arms, the lower control arms are a little worn, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and change the control arms. However, for this car, on the driver's side, the control arm bolt the, on the front side, the forward side, uh, comes out against the pan, I believe. I believe it's the forward one. Anyway, it comes out and it doesn't have enough room to come all the way out because of its length, uh, that it hits the oil pan of the transmission. So from what I've researched and what I found is that if you pick up the engine, you'll get enough clearance to pull that bolt all the way out. And I watched a few videos before I did this because I wanted to try to understand the whole process of this job, you know, and I'm, st I'm, I'm still learning a lot of things on, on some of these cars too. And uh, some just showed putting a jack underneath it and picking it up. Uh, some said you had to take the motor mounts loose um, to get enough height. Uh, I would think that would be true a statement that you would have to take the motor mounts loose to get the height. I don't think you could just put it under there and under the engine and, and pick up the engine and expect the motor mounts to give that much to pull that bolt out. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. We're going to find out. But uh, there's three motor mounts. One that goes right here. There's another one back here. And there's another underneath the airbox here for the transmission. Well, technically there's four. There's another one over here on the front of the engine. But these three, this triangle right here, are the ones that would pick the engine up enough possibly to get that bolt out. I'm hoping that's what happens. It's the driver's side that's affected by that bolt not coming out of the where the transmission is. So I don't know what it's going to take. If we take the motor mounts loose, uh, we got to remove the battery, got to remove the airbox. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of work in there. So with that said, let's take a look at the new parts and then we'll figure out what we're going to do next. Okay, so I picked up these parts from uh, Delphi. Uh, surprisingly, they're made in Turkey, not Taiwan or China. I was kind of surprised to see that. Um, I've already labeled it driver. Uh, they look to be a pretty decent part. You know, a lot of these manufacturers make these parts and the, uh, you know, the, the, the car manufacturers use all the same parts. So I don't know. This Delphi part, I, there's a few others in there, but this one seems to be good quality, has some good reviews, and uh, comes with the ball joint and then the two bushings. We're going to get this done. We're going to get this swap out, and uh, I don't know. We'll see how it goes, and hopefully uh, it goes well. it would probably take me more than one day. I don't have a lot of time in my day to do this, but... Uh, I'm going to work on this for a while. I've been working on the razor, but I'm doing a lot of small stuff on the razor that I'm not really filming. Uh, I got my new weld table set up here. Right now I've got my drill press and my bandsaw on it. And I'm in the process of making, I think they call them fish plates that go across the weld and the stretch in the frame. And uh, these are going to be like rosette welds. I got two more to drill, but my uh, drill got dull so i ordered a carbide one or a diamond tip or a carbide or something maybe this one will do better than this cheapy one here i mean this one did three holes and it probably will get one more but i don't know we'll see but i'll get back on the razor project after i finish the scion and i may uh, get the mini bike out and work on it too but today's focus let's figure out how do we can get the 
controller I'm swapped on this uh, 2015 Scion XP. So uh, after looking things over a little bit, I think I'm definitely going to take the motor mounts loose. The three that we talked about, this one, the back one, and the one under the air box. So uh, to do that, I've got a piece of plastic, kind of a, a skid plate that covers the one in the back. This one is open. I'll show you those holes when I get the bolts out. But for this side, the one that's directly under there, I'm going to go ahead and take the battery out, the battery box, and all of the air box to get to that motor mount that's right there. Um, now in some videos and some research I did, I uh, the people who took this motor mount off found that it was damaged usually. So hopefully mine's not damaged. If it is, we'll get a new one. Or if any of them are damaged, we'll get new ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the battery out, get the air box out, get the uh, skid plate off the bottom so we can see where all the bolts are. Check it out, one step closer to uh, get into that <laughs> control arm bolt. As you can see though, it kind of went backwards. The engine and transmission actually dropped. You can see the center of the bolt hole right here and right here, they're off center. This The transmission actually went down. That's not a problem. It's easy to jack it back up. I've already done it to get the bolt out. And uh, yeah, it's not a problem. It'll be easy to put back in there. Uh, I got the motor mounts on the front and the back unbolted oh and this one is just a long bolt going through like this it was a uh, 14 millimeter both sides and it wasn't very tight so the front motor mount was these two here these two bolts 17 millimeter i got them right here these two and the rear motor mount was these long ones and these nuts now there's two studs and two holes so the, the long bolts go in the forward two, two holes and the nuts go on the studs in the back two holes. Here's where the first two were on the first motor mount underneath the radiator right here. And then I took, <clears throat> I took off this, I'll call it a skid plate. It's held on by these plastic clips and these plastic clips didn't uh, come out at all hardly. They uh, tended to break rather than than pop out. I tried to use my screwdriver to release the center, take the center off, and the center just crumbled. And then I used my crow's foot to just pop them out. They all broke, pretty much all of them. It went right here. You've got two bolts, one there and one over here, and then the nuts go in those holes where the studs are. So now the engine should be free to move up. And uh, that'll get us our clearance right here for this big ass bolt. So uh, I still have one motor mount in. I'm leaving it in just to help align the engine. And uh, we should just be able to go straight up and come out. Now on this side, I don't believe it's a problem. I think it comes out, it clears the oil pan. If not, then we'll take the upper motor mount loose. And we'll jack this side up too. Whatever we need to do to get this done. So now I got to look at the control arms, breaking it loose from the uh, spindle and uh, the strut, and then getting, of course, those bolts out that we're doing all this motor mount work on. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get started on this, and I'll uh, show you what I get what I get done in a few minutes. Whew, it's another day. Uh, it's a couple of days later from my last filming of this video. Um, had some rain come in really kind of tore things up so i had to wait until things dried out and warmed up a little bit you can tell the rotors got rusty from the rain no big deal we'll clean those up before we put them back to use uh, but i ran into a little problem this nut the the uh what they call crown nuts or the nut on top up there i took the cutter pin out but i can't get a socket on it to put a big wrench or breaker bar on it and my wrench just won't take it out. It won't, it won't crack it. Crown nut, that's what it is. So my thoughts are now, I'm gonna go ahead and take the caliper off, the rotor off. I've already loosened the axle and I'm gonna take out the two bolts on top and I'm gonna swing the spindle down and I'll go in with my electric impact 
and a an extension and a socket and get that nut from the top. Uh, that way I can break it loose and then I'll go ahead and, and put it, put the, the spindle back up and cinch it up with a couple bolts. Uh, I think that's going to be the only way to get that ball joint bolt off of there. The best way. Uh, the engine is already, like we said, is already down and, uh, and I need to uh, get the jack underneath there and jack it up. And once I can get that bolt out of the control arm, then the rest of it's uh, easy peasy. So I don't think I'm gonna show that. Um, well, I might show it, I don't know. But I'm gonna get the caliper off, the rotor off, and then we'll get those last two bolts on the spindle and get going again on this project. Kind of cold outside still, but uh, we, get, we can do this. I'll get busy here and, and get this done. So let's take a look at where I'm at. I've got the uh, speed sensor line disconnected, the brake line's connected, the caliper's hung up out of the way, the rotor's off and put away in the garage. Um, I've got two big bolts out of the, the uh, coilover of the strut, and the axle nut is off. So now I should be able to pull this out, put the axle off to the side, and uh, get straight down on that 19 millimeter uh, king nut that I can't break loose. It, this this is a lot of work I'm going through. It may be extra. People will probably say in the comments, oh, you didn't have to do that. I did because I didn't have a way to get to that king nut. That thing just was not cracking. So I figured this is my best, my best alternative and the easiest way to do it. Uh, I mean, we're changing out the control arm anyway, so this is the way I'm going to do it. I don't know if I can just pull it or if I'm going to need uh, a, a pry bar or something to get in here. I put these struts in, so I've had these out before. It shouldn't be that bad. But, uh, yeah, let's check it out. Let's see what I can do. There we go. Ow. Ow. You're going to go out. There we go. Now we'll just set that off to the side. There we go. And there's my bolt I need to get to. So I'm going to get set up right now with a 19 millimeter. Let's get that king nut off of there. Or castle nut or whatever they call it. Wow. Check this out. I got the castle nut off. That thing was a pain in the ass. I tried to use, I tried to use my big electric impact. That didn't work. Uh, after I tried the Ryobi, that didn't work. I wound up using the big breaker bar with the 19 on it. And install, reinstalling a bolt here at the top. Tying the the CV kind of up out of the way. And I got in there and I just, I yanked on that thing, man. I put constant pressure until that castle nut broke free. That was a pain in the butt. That was more work than I thought it was going to be. But I got it. Now I've got the ball joint separated, put my pickle fork in there, and uh, drove it in there with my my five pound sledge, and was able to separate the ball joint. Now, we can jack the transmission up, or the engine up, and see if we can get that bolt. If we can get that bolt out, that's the last of our worries, man. That big ass bolt, right in there. We can get this bolt out with the transmission, and engine going up we'll be golden that's our next big obstacle so I'm gonna go ahead and get the floor jack out get it on a piece of piece of wood and you put it right there in the middle on the uh, casing and you push up do not push it on the oil pan you could damage it but we're gonna push it on the on the casing and uh, with the three motor mounts out we should get enough I saw some videos out there where guys were Loosening up the subframe and pushing the subframe down and pushing the engine up I'm gonna try it just pushing the engine up see what I can get out of it Hopefully I can get enough to get that bolt out All that because the bushings are wore out. Come on Toyota. Can't you do something better than this? Next time maybe right next time 
Check it out. That's that stupid forward control arm bolt. And it looks like it's coming out. It is not an easy task, let me tell you. There it is. We got it. Now, let me show you what it took to get there. So, so there's a motor mount right here, right? And uh, we got a bolt through the middle and we got four bolts going into the frame. As the transmission engine was coming up, it would hit on that motor mount. So that meant that I had to remove it. I removed the four bolts in the frame right there and the motor mount came out. That gave the transmission enough room to come all the way up and clear that stupid bolt on the control arm. Now I realize you're trying to cram a lot into a small space, but really couldn't they design the oil pan or something to work around that bolt to make it easier access? And I know that, you know, they charge by the hour for every piece that you take out of here. Like this motor mount was probably two hours to remove or more. You know, the battery's an hour to remove. The air box is an hour to move. And what, it going rates are like over $100 an hour, $150 an hour, something like that. That's expensive just to get to where we can get that bolt out to control to do that control on. That's not including what we did to uh, get the bottom nut off by removing the brakes and and the rotor and and uh, you know uh, the the CV shaft, all that. All that takes so much time to get off, and it's all by the hour. And uh, man, they're gonna empty your pockets just to do this repair. Honestly, uh, to do a repair like this. Yes, it's not hard, but it is very time consuming. There's so many parts that have got to be uh, removed and taken out in order to get to where we need to be. Um, now I got to say it's going to be a walk in the park. I got one more bolt left and uh, we should have it. So uh, I'm going to get that arm off and I'll come back to you when I got that bolt, when I got that arm off of there. Willie wins. The Scion gave up its parts. Scratched one down for Willie. We still got one more side to do, but at least I got the arm out. I really don't see any damage that's causing a clunking sound. But, um, yeah. I mean, there are some some stress cracks in here. You can kind of see them on both sides. You know, the car has about 150000 on it. Or 140000 So, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure that it's... It's okay to change them. This one looks good, just like new. And of course, that one suffered some damage taking it apart with the with the pick fork. But uh, yeah, this one is definitely more solid. That one is just like the other one, and okay, we got a brand new castle nut. Look at that. So I'm not I don't have to worry about reusing that old one. Um, yeah, it looks good. I like I said, I don't really see anything that could uh, be causing the clunking sound. We've already changed the uh, the strut in there. That's in a def another video. Again, I'll link it in the description. Uh, the only other thing I can think of is maybe the sway bar in link. It's got a little damage on it that uh, the grease is coming out of it. So maybe I'll pick a set of those up. Um, really, that's all the parts that would that would be causing a clunk. These are all the moving parts right here. So, uh, huh. I don't see any physical frame damage. There's no cracks. I don't see anything that would be causing that. And it sounded like it was coming from this side, you know? So, uh, we'll get it back together and now uh, we'll see what it does. And I'll talk about the reassembly as we get going here. So yeah, we got the arm out and it's time to put it back in. <sighs> okay, here we go. I'll take a look. The new arm is in there. Castle nut's still loose. These are uh, ran in with the impact, the big bolts. Those are 20, 22 millimeter heads. I ran them in with the impact, but I'll check them with the torque. Same with uh, this one up over here. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see that? Let's try this way. That one over there. Uh, that one is is ran in as well and uh, that one again with the impact so now i'll check them with torque and i believe they get torque to like 90 or 
uh, yeah, like 90 or 100 foot pounds. So we'll, we'll get on that. We got this one too. I think this one goes to 70 foot pounds. I'm not sure. I'll double check. If I find something different, I'll put it in the description. Uh, we'll get this one torqued down. We'll get those torqued down. Then we get the fun of putting it all back together. Yeah. And there's what I was talking about. The sway bar in link. It's leaking a lot of uh, grease where the boot is damaged. I don't know if that maybe that joint is damaged and that's causing a clunking sound as well. But it could very well be. We'll, we'll definitely get a new set of sway bar in links and uh, see if that fixes things. I don't see, like I was saying, I don't see any other frame damage anywhere. There's no cracks or no welds broken. or I don't see anything that would be causing those noises. But there was something. I and mean, we'll eventually find it. I won't give up. I'll keep working until I find it. But this will be the next part I change right here. Sway bar in link. Now let me get these things torqued. We'll get the axle put back in the spindle. And uh, we'll start putting it all back together. To show also that before I put the CV axle back inside the hub, I cleaned the threads with a wire brush. And I put a little anti-seize on there just so it makes it easier next time to go in and out. I should have put some anti-seize here. I forgot about it. I like to do that on the ball joints as well. But I missed it. And I'm not going to take it apart to put it back in. So uh, it's going to be without never seize, and it'll probably be just as hard to take it apart as it was this time. But at least the actual shaft will have anti seize on it. Wow, this is a big project. Uh, you know, from my other videos, I don't have a lot of time during the day, and I do what I can do uh, as much as I can before I go to work. Um, so we're still working on the, the XB, of course. And I've got the driver's side pretty much done. I'm at the point where I'm basically redoing the brakes. Uh, the brakes and everything were done um, just a couple weeks ago. So I'm not putting in any new pads or nothing like that. But I have to put the rotor back on and the caliper back on. And uh, let, let's look at what I got going on and we'll talk about some things. Okay, so up under here, we've got everything back together. We've got the king, uh, or yeah, the what do they call that? The castle nut torqued to 170 uh, foot pounds. We got these up here. They're like 172 foot pounds. They're both, they're all done. And uh, these also over here are something like 170 foot pounds on the, on the frame. So uh, that's pretty much everything put back together. I do have the rotor back on. I've got the brake caliper over here. A brake pad fell out of it, but it's a good thing that it landed on the uh, backside. So I'm going to clean the grease off the backside and re-grease it. But after I put the caliper back on, I also need to take like a little Scotch-Brite pad and uh, just kind of clean the rust off with some brake cleaner and a Scotch-Brite to get this surface rust that's came up during these rains we've had recently. Um, backside is okay, obviously, but the front is where the majority of the surface rust is. So I'm going to clean this off and I'll put the caliper back on. Then I'll take the, the caliper off of the caliper bracket so that I can reinstall the pad on that side and then put it back together. But I got uh, the bolts. They're 12 millimeter for the, uh, for the brake line and for the speed sensor line up over here. Got those put back in. And everything looks really good. So yeah, we're just going to get here and put the brakes back together and then we're done with this side and we'll move on to the uh, passenger side. Oh, I should mention that I did also retorque this. Now that I just ran it in with the torque wrench until it bottomed out. Uh, I mean with the impact gun until it bottomed out a couple of times. And then I bent over the, uh, the nut so it won't turn back out. So I know there's probably a torque spec for that, but that obviously that impact wrench can put a lot of torque on it. So um, I think we're good here. Uh, I'm leaving the motor mounts loose for the moment. I may have to uh, jack it back up for the other side. I don't know yet. We're going to find out here in a few minutes. But I'm going to finish putting this together. And we'll move on. Oh man, what a job that driver's side is. But we got it. It's all done. Everything's put back together. And uh, ready to go. Now we got to do 
the passenger side. Hopefully that side is a little easier. Uh, that, uh, I did this side first because I believed that the uh, complication of the engine needing being to lift up to clear that bolt on the on the uh, control arm was going to be a problem. Now we're past that. Everything's back together. I haven't put the motor mounts back in yet because I'm going to wait until I do the passenger side. Uh, once I do the passenger side, um, get that bolt in or out, then I'll know I can, you know, I'll finish it up and I'll put the motor mounts back. And uh, But driver's side is done. Everything's torqued. Now back to the other side. Wow, taking a look at the passenger side, I've got it pretty much ready to go. Got the the, the uh, ball joint all broke loose already. I got the bolts out that hold the control arm to the frame. And I did have to jack the engine back up to get this bolt out. Um, I couldn't get a socket on it and use an impact or anything like that. It was still too tight between the oil pan and the head of the bolt, even after jacking it up like it is. But I did use my short breaker bar and some mighty foot power to break it loose and then my ratchet to bring the bolt out. Um, I've got all the bolts out right now, both the front one, the front one and the back one. So yeah, I'm ready just to go ahead and take them out. Then we can pull the control arm out and uh, put the new one in and do it all in reverse. This one's going a little easier than the other side. I guess because I did the other side already, that would make sense, right? I kind of know what's going on. So uh, yeah, let me get going. Ooh, it's a nice sunny day out here today. So there's the old control arm out. I really don't see that much damage. There's a few minor cracks in there uh, showing in the bushing. However, you know, it could be a lot more under load uh, with the weight of the vehicle. I don't know. The forward bushing looks good. The ball joint suffered a little bit with the uh, pickle fork getting it out. But overall, the control arm looked okay. Here's the new one with the new bushings. A new ball joint ready to be installed right back in there okay here's a quick look at the passenger side all back together with the new control arm everything's bolted torqued cotter pins were needed uh, don't forget to take a punch and punch that down so that it won't turn um, once it's all torqued um, we talked about torque specifications earlier I'll try to put them in the description. Um, yeah, so it's all done. Uh, time to to uh, put the engine back where it belongs. We got to get back inside and put the motor mounts back together and uh, finish bolting it all back up. Put all the bolts on the bottom and the skid plate on the bottom. Then we can put the wheels on and set it back on the ground. Now, normally when I would do this job, on control arms, we would like to have the vehicle at ride height to torque the control arm bolts. With needing to lift the engine to get the access to the forward bolts, uh, that makes it really hard to do. Um, I went ahead and torqued it when it was up like this, when it when the arms were pretty much at full droop. Uh, it's probably, like I said, not the best thing to do, and I'm sure somebody's going to say in the comments that it wasn't the right thing to do but i couldn't see in my current configuration without a, a a lift or something like that to lift the engine and and uh lift the control arm as well i tried with the floor jack on the passenger side just to lift the floor jack but it actually was lifting the vehicle off of the jack stands i have and it wasn't doing what i wanted it to do so uh i just went ahead and torqued them where they are now uh, when I get it back on the ground, if I still have access to those forward bolts somehow, maybe I can get a wrench in there and I can try torquing them, but I honestly, I don't think so. It took uh, quite a bit of work to get those out. And uh, yeah, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put the motor mounts back together, put the wheels on it and set it back on the ground. And then uh, we can take it for a test drive. So I'm gonna lower the engine back down so I can put the motor mount, it's got four bolts right here, and then one long bolt through there. I'm gonna get that done, and then I got the the, uh, the four bolt, the two bolts, 
on the back side and then the nuts on the back side and then the two bolts on the forward side this being the forward side up here that being the back side back there and then that'll hold down the engine then we can put the air air box back in and the battery back in and plug it in and hopefully all is good so we shall see we shall see we shall see let's go ahead and get this started let's go ahead and lower the engine down slowly there we go just like that try to get it all the way down Boom! That's those studs back there falling into place. We'll have to pick it up again in a minute, but that should get us low enough to uh, put those four bolts back in. Let's see, the four bolts are up here. They're 17 millimeter. I don't know what the torque is on those bolts. Oh, there goes one. I don't know what the torque is, except, you know, YouTube tight. So, uh, get this set down in here. I'll try to get these bolts in. Oh, and uh, poked a hole in my finger. Was bleeding a lot. I was actually doing the brakes on the passenger side, putting them back together, and uh, there was like red grease. And I was like, "Where's this red grease coming from?" And I do use a red grease, so I was like, "What is all this coming from? Where is it?" And I was wiping it up, and uh, come to find out, it's me. It's my blood. I was bleeding. <laughs> I was bleeding, man. After having my heart attack last year, I used a lot of blood thinners. And, uh, yeah, my blood is like water now. Sticky water. But it's water. And I just wrapped it up with some blue tape and a shop rag. Should be good. Makes it hard, though, to use it. Now, this motor mount has the three bolts on top for the air box. So, uh, you got to get it back in the right way so that those holes line up. I mean, there's really no way you can get it wrong but got to get it back in there we go we got it all put back together took it for a quick test drive anybody else ever tie anybody else ever chew on zip ties i like to i don't know i like to have gum something to chew on anyway that's beside the point so we've got the scion it's all put back together everything looks good and uh I did have I did have a problem of one of the dust shields scraping against the rotor when I took it for its test drive, its initial test drive, and uh, it made a horrible noise. <laughs> so I brought it back home and I couldn't figure out what it was. I lifted the car up again, turned each wheel, and yeah, it was definitely that dust shield on the passenger side got bent somehow. So uh, I just bent it back in place away from the rotor and good to go. Took it for another test drive. All is good. That was definitely a successful DIY Willie project. It got rid of the clunk. Uh, drives nice. It's nice and quiet now. It's not rattly suspension. Everything is right where, how it should be. So really enjoy this car. And uh, it's one of my favorite cars again. And uh, yeah. So that was the video of swapping the lower control arms on the uh, 2015 Scion XB. Honestly, you could not have done it without uh removing the motor mounts and lifting the engine i don't care who's gonna say what or how yes okay if you drop the whole sub flame sub frame maybe you can get to it but even the videos i saw online that were dropping the sub frame you still uh loosen the motor mounts and lifted the engine up to gain just that little bit more you know the way i did it uh it worked perfectly yeah i struggled a couple times got a lot of ouches but i'm good and uh it turned out really nice so if you like the project give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and uh, always come back to the ui willie for your niece <laughs> your nissan for your scion xb your nissan frontier uh the baja razor and of course the mini bikes we're gonna get back on those here soon and uh yeah i hope that's it for the car maintenance for a while and um we can do some more of the fun stuff so uh well i'll see you next time bye